Hey guys, I'm Andre. Thank you very much for joining my session and I hope you had a great platform con 24. So some of you guys might already know me from other public appearances and most of the time I speak about internal developer platforms and this is of course what I will also do today for you guys. And I think um, the next couple of minutes will be very interesting for customers that operate critical infrastructure and are planning to implement an internal developer platform. And I hope you guys will enjoy the session. And if you have any further questions, just drop me a message over LinkedIn or Slack and I'll try my best to answer it for you. Good, first things first, um, I'm since 13 years with Bechtler and um, yeah, I'm sure that most of you will know Bechtler. Bechtler is Germany's largest IT system house and we are one of the major European players in this segment. And I have more than 15,000 workmates and together we really built a multi-billion company. And to be very specific about the public sector segment, um, last year we did 4 billion in revenue in this segment. And I think we really have a lot of experience in this segment. And also we saw in the past a lot of challenges these organizations have. So speaking of challenges, um, most of these challenges um, I put here on my slides might be not new for you, but I think the customers I work with most of the time, they have issues in deploying cloud native applications that are containerized onto multiple environments. And um, Speaking of environments, customers operate probably OpenShift on-premises. Sometimes it's even air-gapped. Some customers also in parallel want to utilize Azure with AKS. Yeah? And I see that these customers most of the time don't have the skill to really build and operate these kind of platforms. And still, the high security requirements are there. Yeah. The biggest challenge I personally see are not really the technical challenges we have. Yeah, there are a lot of good products on the market um, with which you can really solve this kind of issues I spoke about. But the resistance to change is sometimes in the organizations really, really high. And yeah, from my perspective, that's because the stakeholders um, you work with yeah, really try to protect themselves from change. Yeah? And I made this little funny stakeholder map here for you, and maybe you will find some interesting um, yeah, phrases here I put on the slides. And um, yeah, I always say the system always tries to protect the system. And the first advice I want to give customers who see themselves also in such a scenario. Um, try really, first of all, to bring your engineering teams together with your developers. Yeah? Because most of the time, um, if architects are directly on the table, things get complicated. If you involve IT security, things could take long. And my recommendation is always try to act PUC-driven try out new technologies and uh, you will be successful, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So if we take a closer look at the reference architecture, yeah, this is a reference architecture I discussed with a customer some couple of weeks ago yeah, and uh, the customer is in a similar situation that you saw before. And I said like, okay, how do you like this architecture? I explained all the building blocks for the customer and um, then the customer said, hey, Andre, that's amazing, cool. All these technologies that I can see in this architecture, we already have these technologies in place and we use them already. And then I said, okay, um, good to know, but um, how do you use these technologies and why is it not possible for you to really deploy applications onto different environments and uh, why can you not utilize different clouds? And um, if you take a closer look here, um, we see that um, the customer's issue is that he, in this case, spoke too much about building infrastructure. That's the block number one. And in this reference architecture, we call it a resource plane. 
And um, I see that customers very often only talk about how to provision resources. Yeah, They want to provision new service systems. They want to build a new container platform. And then I ask the customers like, okay, but what's the topic number two? How do you specify workloads? How, topic number three, do you orchestrate your platform? And um, yeah, there's no secret that Bechte since one and a half years is a Humanitech customer. Yeah, So we use Humanitech products to solve these issues. And um, what I see is that a lot of customers don't know these technologies and never tried them out. And um, yeah, this is the journey I want to take you to with. And um, I want to really give you advice that it's not really the only thing to plan your resource plan. These kind of topics you see over here, yeah, you maybe have a better clue um, of how to do it for yourself, yeah, how to plan your resource plans, how to plan your container platform. But it's not the only thing. And I think that also the regulated customers have these resource plan architectures pretty well under control. Yeah? But um, I think the topic number two in specifying workloads is really much more important. Yeah? Um, in this example, um, I took out the automation topic. If you see how developers and engineers work together, yeah, you see that um, they also use similar toolings. Yeah, they work with Terraform, they use Ansible, but at the end, does really a developer want to work with Terraform and provision infrastructure? I don't think so. Yeah, And in addition, also the risk I see here is that all these automation tools you might use already, they hold really critical configuration values. Yeah, So the information about your critical infrastructure is stored by these tools. And from my perspective, you don't want external developer teams to access this kind of information. And so our advice is always think of abstraction. Abstraction is not isolation. Yeah, It's a friendly abstraction that we recommend. That means engineers can go on using the automation tool of choice and developers get really the possibility to define their workloads. And the open source project SCORE is really a good way to do that. Yeah, In the case of SCORE, a developer is enabled to really just define what his app needs to run properly. And the resources that need to be deployed to serve this app is then provisioned by the automation the engineer provides. Yeah, And that's really something a lot of regulated customers don't know yet. Yeah, maybe they don't have this kind of technologies already in their portfolio. And I only can tell you that if you try it out, you will be amazed what kind of abstraction you can really produce with this kind of technologies. And the last thing, um, part number three, is um, the orchestration. Yeah, um, About orchestration, we could now talk four hours and more. We could even do a PLC or an MVP or whatever. Yeah, But for you guys to know, um, orchestration really helps you in this kind of environments to build a kind of installation package of your cloud native application and you can then deploy it on any platform. That's the advantage orchestration really has. And if you are into that topic, I can only recommend my last talk on the OpenShift Commons um, there I dive really deeper into how air gap scenarios work and how the whole process is uh, really working for you. And um, today I don't have the time to dive deeper into the little drawing you see there. Yeah, um, but it's one of my recommendations to evaluate really a proper platform orchestration. Yeah. Um, to summarize this a little bit, yeah, um, if we um, see that there's always uh, an, an, an abstraction between developers and engineers. Um, we want to make it more friendly, yeah, because um, you see that if the abstraction is not made right, yeah, um, developers are not boarded on time, yeah, and engineers um, really 
um, yeah, think of death after day number one um, to operate an application, to operate the whole platform, because um, it's really most of the time a very wild architecture that really these engineers has to operate. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, from my personal experience, most of the time the problem that in different projects you use different tech stacks, and this is most of the time not maintainable anymore. Yeah. So try to really um, standardize your technologies and try also to enable the developers to use the technology in an easier way. Yeah. You could provide also in addition developer portals like Backstage yeah, to make life of developers easier. And um, if you go through these little advices, I think um, on the left side you can see it now that really the life could get much easier and the most important topic i see also yeah um in my team we have more than 110 developers yeah and we can really board new developers much faster yeah before maybe it took us weeks yeah to bring developers on the system to get the right security clar uh, clarification and um also um, to let these developers dive into the documentation and through a proper platform engineering approach, yeah, you can board your developers much faster. Yeah? And um, I think um, now you should also know what could be the steps yeah, you could really go through to try out all these things. Yeah? Like I said, it's really time to experiment with these technologies. Yeah? And um, we as Bechtle go through several steps with you. Yeah? We, will, we will guide you. And um, the steps you see them um, on the slide, you know, I don't need to read this for you, I think. But um, as you can maybe recognize, we really try to bring developers and engineers pretty fast into production. Yeah? They should really try the technology. They should try the new processes. And we want to collect pretty quickly feedback from them. 